see like this addition of your defense because it'll have quite a few new faces. Yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be an interesting deal because and it's going to be a work in progress for uh, several weeks, I would guess. You know, we've got an interesting mixture of guys that have played a lot of football and feel really comfortable with, and other guys are going to have pretty key big roles, uh, probably bigger as time goes on that we haven't seen yet or don't know very much about. So, seeing how those guys are going to respond to the to the lights is going to be a big thing. And how paranoid. Or are you kind of for some of those growing pains that could happen because of it? I think they're inevitable. I think they're inevitable with anybody that's going to that's gonna play. I think you just got to work through them and hope that the effort uh, kind of washes away some of the mistakes. What, uh, what is it about Asa Newsom that allowed him to show up, you know, just a few weeks, months ago and yeah. be this high up on the depth chart? Well, for starters, he's, he's, you know, physically very mature and very ready. I mean, he came in as a kid that has had weight. He had uh, length. He had, you know... I was really well developed body wise, had good body control, uh, unusual body control for a young guy. Uh, and we couple that with the fact that he's got a really high IQ. You know, I know he's, he's being taught some things that he's never heard before, believe me, but um, he's got a great capacity for learning. And I think that's, that's just the improvement that he makes. When he makes mistakes, he, he rarely makes repeated mistakes. And I think that he's, he's just as that continues to build and his experience and amount of snaps continue to grow, I think he's just going to get better and better. He'll be a big, big factor uh, toward the end of the year. What about, what about a guy like, like Jack Fabris who's also kind of worked his way up to, to being a, a, a backup as a true Yeah, very much, same, very much same thing. I mean, just physically really mature. And, you know, he obviously came from a, from a coaching family, you know, with, with John being here and grew up around it and grew up around the intensity of college football. That didn't shock him. It doesn't uh, surprise him at all. So he's he's been very much the same as Asa in his development. I think, you know, he's he's had some things that he's had to work through, but but he hasn't batted an eye. He just continues to learn and get better. What's his defense doing best right now? <laughs> That's a great question, you know, because we, we've mixed and matched so many different people. I think right now, one thing that we're we're much improved on from the early part of camp is our communication. You know, I think in early in camp, I think there was a lot of guys that were waiting for the Deuce Greens or waiting for the Austin Moores or the Kobe Savages to, to, to say something and then I'll do it. And I think right now I, I feel like guys are starting to anticipate their moves a little bit on their own. And that's, we're not so relying heavily on, um, you know, a few leaders. We've got more of a centralized uh, structure of communication. Seem was a good football team. But as you look down that schedule with Troy and Missouri and then right into the Big 12, is there a sense that hopefully you can get away from these guys a little bit to see a lot of young players on Saturday? Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I, I mean, that would be great. I don't, I'm don't. i not banking on that at all. We haven't talked about that at all. Um, you bet Seymour's a good football team, in particular offensively. You know, they, they are explosive on offense. They've put up yards and points on people. and. Um, you know, shoot, uh, coaching at that level, I just know how they're going to approach this game, you know, when, when they get a chance to play a Power 5 opponent. So um, not something that we've really even discussed as a staff at all. Injuries, Deuce and Uso have both been a little banged up. What's their status? Yeah, uh, Deuce has been practicing all week, um, and Uso has been practicing all week. And so, um, you know, game day decisions. What is, what is Daz Purnell? What's that next step? That, that he's taken. I know Coach Kleiman said if he's, he's pretty much locked up at Sam linebacker. Spot. Yeah, I wish people could see him practice and how fast and how hard he practices, um, because you wouldn't have seen that if you were looking at the tape from last year's games. And so I think the next step for him is just taking it to the actual game field, you know. And I think that he's a different player than he was in December of last year. He just confidence-wise, body-wise, um, he's not he's not the same. And so I'm, I'm eager for people to see that. Steps as Austin Moore continue to progress yeah. going into 2023. As much as a machine can progress, yeah, he's just uh, you know we just upload the new software and he continues on because he's he's incredible, man. He's just uh, talk about one of the steadiest guys I've ever been around. He doesn't have a bad day, doesn't have a bad period. He just continues to go and. Um, I, I think he really gives a lot of strength. You know, you talk about Asa Newsom and, you know, some of those guys that are Austin Romaine, some of the younger linebackers, just the, the steadying presence of Austin is, is phenomenal for them. Is there a factor or a phase of your defense that can take it from solid or good to great by the end of the year? 
Yeah, I'm hoping that we're, we become a much better tackling team. You know, I, I thought we tackled well at the first part of last year, and I thought the end of the season that wasn't the case. You know, I, when you look at the Alabama game, when you look at, you know, some of the later games, we weren't a good tackling team. And I think that really put us in some advantageous third downs early in the season, and at the end of the year, it was a whole bunch more third and twos, third and ones that could have easily been third and sevens and third and eights, you know. And so with young guys, that concerns me. You know, that's something that we don't do a lot of live stuff with. You know, that's not uh, coach's philosophy. We'll, we'll do it occasionally. We'll do it a couple of times, but it's not like we're doing that every day. And just the speed of the game, I think those guys just got to trust that they're good football players and they're brought here for a reason. Some of those guys that haven't done it, and, and you know, I'm, I'm certain that that will improve as the year goes on. When it comes to starts, you have zero of it returning at cornerback. How do you feel about that group because of that? I feel I feel fine. I don't worry about it at all. I, I feel really really uh, confident. Jacob Parrish, um, he is. Uh, you, you'd have thought he's a three year starter the way he, he walks around here. I feel really comfortable with Will Lee. Um, just a really really natural football player. I feel really really good about Keenan Garber. Um, you know, if I would have said that a year ago, he'd have laughed at me. You know, it just he, he is just uh, he's been great. You know, and we feel like. We've had some other guys in that room that are coming along too. You know, Justice James being one of those guys that you'll see. Um, you know, I, I feel I feel fine. When you have experienced linebackers back with Daniel and Austin, as a defensive play caller, are you able to call some more exotic blitzes, do some things that you haven't been able to in the past? You know, that's the that's the the tricky thing. If if it's if it's Daniel Green and he's backed up by Nick Allen, you know, from a year ago that that has played a bunch of snaps. You do feel good about that. When it's Daniel Green and he's backed up by a guy that maybe hasn't played as many snaps, you got to be kind of aware of who's in the game, you know, so as to not screw people up. And, you know, at the end of the day, we just want to execute. And, and uh, yeah, you bet we're going to have our exotic things, but um, we're also going to be uh, intelligent about who we're doing those exotic things with. And that's that kind of falls on my shoulders a little bit. Is Marcus Siegel taking that instinctual grasp yeah. of Moving from corner oh, to yeah. front safety. Yeah, yeah. He, I'm excited for you guys to see uh, him. He's um, he's a he's a special football player. Really instinctive, really natural, really smart. Good communicator, good leader. Um, yeah, he's you know in November we'll be talking about him. Talk for a couple more. Is there uh, anything that really concerns you about Simo? I know just looking on paper, it looks like they got a really good running back. Yeah, I mean, they, personnel wise, they've they've got. Uh, you know the quarterback back, and I, I think anytime you have a quarterback back in game one, that's a that's a big deal. Uh, the tailback is going to be one of the best in the history of their school, you know, which is uh, um, they've had some good teams over the years, and and so that's a that's a thing. They've got a good uh, good group of receivers, athletic receivers. Uh, Flower Noy is is uh, is a special difference maker type of a receiver. So yeah, they've got some they've got some personnel that 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 could play with anybody. Um, you know what? What's concerning about them is I think they do a really good job in the RPO game, and they and they are going to try to get one-on-one -on -one matchups in the pass game, whether it's quick game, whether it's fades, whether it's whatever. Um, and they they don't run the ball into into boxes that they shouldn't run the ball into. So I think quarterback does a nice job with the decision making on that stuff, and I think their system is is really interesting. I think they do a good job offensively, coaching wise. So um, definitely have some challenges. You know, definitely have to. Uh, give some pictures, maybe try to show them some things um, are open that maybe aren't open, or, or you know, vice versa. So we'll see how that all plays out. Is Taylor Rent the guy you're expecting to go up against? Uh, I'm sorry. The quarterback Taylor Rent. I, I would, I would, I wouldn't see why not. Yeah, I, I think he, um, you know, I, he, he, he just does to me a good job of taking care of the football and managing the game. I don't know what they're coaching him to do or whatever. But when you look at a stat sheet and a guy only has seven interceptions on a season, to me, that's pretty dang good when you're playing 13 games. And so um, he's 12 games, I'm sorry. So I think he's, he's uh, you know, I, I would be surprised if it was anybody else.